What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is Bell Collective Season 1, Episode 6. So, we start this episode off with Latrice and Leticia. Leticia. Meeting up. And she's bringing Latrice up to speed on the fair, the you know, the Ferris Street Project. And, you know, Latrice is like, I am here for it. She's like, I'm all about supporting each other. I'm all about entrepreneurship. I'm all about wherever I can get in and fit in. She said, so whatever you need me to do, I can support it. She said, you know, for me, this has all been new for me. And, they've, you know, in my journey and trying to start my business and be successful and do all the right things and not make mistakes, you know, I've reached out to people who did not support me, who weren't there for me. Um, and so I don't ever want to be that person. So I'm here for your dream, however I can help. She said, yeah, because right now Marie has pledged, you know, to help. And, of course, she was like, wah, wah, wah. And she was like, what? What's wrong? And she said, listen, Marie is mean. Period. She's mean. She's a mean-spirited person. And she makes people not want to even participate or do things if she's going to be a part of it. And you know what? I think that is pretty much the best summation of the Marie experience. Marie is mean. And I know that might be an oversimplification of it. But you know what? We can use a whole bunch of fancy words to say the same thing. She's mean. And she never misses an opportunity to be mean. Moving on. We have Tambra. She goes to the doctor. Listen, I get it. She's dealing with women issues. Um, I've, I've dealt with a lot of women issues. And a lot of the things that she's experienced, I've experienced the same thing. I've had surgeries for issues dealing with, you know, women issues. Um, I was told... You know, at a very young age, my early 20s, that if I ever wanted to have children, it was going to be very difficult for me and da 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 da, da. So, I definitely feel her pain. You know, the doctor looked at her tests and she's got fibroids and they keep coming back. And right now, he, he said they're like really huge. You know, they're like bigger than her uterus right now. And he said, before we start talking about trying to get you pregnant... I really feel like we need to do another surgery. And, of course, that's not something she's looking forward to. Surgery is never fun. Um, you know, and so it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to deal with. And it's definitely something to think about. In my case, my doctor was telling me he was worried about my fibroids coming back cancerous. So it was a really, really big decision I had to make about some things for me. So... I feel you, girl. I do. I, you know, and I think a lot of times people don't, people just think women have sex, get pregnant, nine months later they have a baby. They don't realize that it ain't always that easy and a whole, whole lot goes on, you know, in between. Some, um, I want to keep calling that girl Simone so bad. Antoinette. This scene with Antoinette, I was really, really, really here for. And you know what, Antoinette, I respect the hell out of you for this moment. Antoinette brought together local doctors in the Jackson community and she said what she wants to do is to pay for At the three HBCUs. She wants to pay for kids who want to take the MCAT. I'm, I'm assuming that's yeah the MCAT and They told their stories And they talked about what inspired them to be doctors and you know for them one guy talked about he met when he was in school, he met a guy, and that was the first black doctor he had ever seen. And in his mind, I was like, you know what? I could be a doctor. Because he had met one. He had never met one before. He had never seen one before. But that inspired him to decide to go to medical school and become a doctor. And as the, 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 the people went around the room and told their stories about what inspired them, what made them do what they did, um, it was a powerful moment. And you know what, Antoinette, I've probably been giving you a little bit of a hard time about a little bit of the shady stuff and... You know, you showing up to a ball gown at a brunch and stuff like that. But I was here for this moment. I really, really was. And this, you know, I'm going to give Bill Collective credit. Y'all got some drama, but I feel like y'all are still trying to send a message and show some things and do some things. Here's my problem with that moment. She invited Kaylon again. Kaylon started talking about how 
she got it in this moment that she, you know, that basically this is what I walked away from because I don't even want to try to repeat what she said. This is what I walked away from. Because you were in a room with people telling nice stories about what inspired them to do some great things as a black person and the discrimination, but because it was really nice and, and pretty and we weren't talking about the nastiness of discrimination and racism, you were comfortable. And you said you received it better than at the brunch. Girl, bye. Because here's the reality. Racism ain't pretty. Racism isn't nice. Racism doesn't come in a nice little bow and tie it up. That's just not what it is. And so if you can sit in a room of black professionals and talk about their experience as far as how they became doctors, then you can sit in a room of black women and hear them tell their experiences on racism and colorism. You don't get to pick and choose which experience makes you comfortable. Now, if I'm wrong and I misinterpreted it, tell me in the comments, but that's how I took that moment. That's how I took it. All right, moving on. Oh, Lord. It's Latrice and Zaddy's anniversary. Latrice comes home looking for stuff, waiting for him to have a great anniversary plan, and he ends up giving her a bag of flour, which, of course, was a total silliness, and, you know, um, she's mad and irritated, talking about, you always do this, you always do this. So my thing is this. Girl, if he always do this for every anniversary, why are you expecting anything different? See, here's the reality. Y'all keep dealing with people who do certain things and expecting a different result. You know that's the definition of insanity, right? If he never does anything nice for y'all's anniversary, why were you coming home expecting him to do something nice for y'all's anniversary? Now, the reality is he did have a nice evening planned. He took her down to the, I guess they have like a little gazebo area. And he had it all decorated with flowers. And he had a, a um, chef come in. And they had dinner or whatever. And they were having dinner. He bought her a Rolex, you know. And she said something that set him off. She made a comment. Well, she was talking about having abandonment issues. And she said, you know, I know that sometimes I can be a little closed off. Because I've dealt, you know, basically every man in my life has left me. She's had two brothers killed. Um, one brother went to jail. Her father died. And before he died, he really wasn't, you know, he was pretty much an absentee dad the way she talks about it. And so she said, you know, I know I have abandonment issues. And so there's a part of me that's always waiting for you to leave. And then she talks about the, then she said something about him talking about other women in front of him. And he said, well, I mean, if, if me and you're not together anymore, yeah, I'm going to find me another woman. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it was edited. I don't know if he just, it, it hit him what she said, the totality of what she said. And then he responded. But then he got upset. He got upset and he was just like, I don't, you're not going to sit here and lie on me. I don't talk about other women in front of you. You're not going to lie on me. You're not going to lie on me. And the one thing I have noticed, and y'all correct me if you, you don't see it this way. I feel like he is very conscious of those cameras and very conscious of how he's going to be received. Because I feel like there have been a couple of times where she's made comments that he didn't like and he got upset because I don't know if she feels like he's trying to portray her. I mean, she's trying to portray him in a certain way. I don't know. But you can say whatever you want to say to her on camera. You can call her fake and all kinds of other stuff. And it's okay, right? Whatever. So then, um, um, Later on in the episode, you know, he ends up leaving her there, honey. He got mad. He left her. He said, listen, I'm about to go. Either you ride with me or you walk in. And she, you know, was like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? And he was like, don't lie on me. I don't appreciate you lying on me. I ain't never talked about no other women in front of you. And she was like, I'm sitting here opening up to him, telling him that I have a fear of abandonment. And he leaves me. That was pretty ironic in that moment. I agree. So later on in the episode, she has sort of a redo. You know, she has rose petals and she's got a saxophonist and a massage. Uh, someone to come in, a masseuse to massage him while they're talking. She said, you know, I want to treat you like the king that you are. And then they have, you know, dinner or whatever. And she she apologized and she said, listen, it was never my, inten my intention to make you feel any kind of way. And for that, I apologize. 
She said, but I really need you to understand. I need you to hear my that I have this fear. And I need you to really understand that this is my fear. Um, I don't know if he understood or not, child. I don't know if he got it. I, I, I don't know. And then she said, so can I have my Rolex back? So then I'm thinking, so did you do all this to get your Rolex back? Or did you do all this because you really felt like you was wrong? Because I don't feel like she was wrong. I mean, if she, if he never said it, then, yeah, don't lie on him. But I don't think her intention was to be malicious. or She wasn't even saying it like she was mad. She wasn't saying it like she had an attitude or she was mad about it. She was just saying, listen, that makes me feel some kind of way because it makes me feel like you're ready to leave me. I don't know. Ciao. But anyway, she apologized and... It is what it is, yeah. Marie and her son. We see Marie, her son, and her husband meet up down to the little play, the little kids' playroom, whatever, with two out of his three kids. I guess the third baby mama was like, no, ma'am, you're not putting my baby on TV. Because we've only seen two out of the three, or maybe we've seen all three just at different times. No, we did see the third one because that other baby is like a newborn newborn. He like maybe two or three months old or something. So we saw all three. We just ain't see all three at the same time. Anyway... The son said that their relationship has definitely gotten better, that therapy has definitely helped, and that they are communicating again, they're talking, they're texting, not every day and all of that, but there's more of a communication, and so it is helping. So you know what, I'm done with that. If you like it, I love it. If it's working, go for it. Marie said that things between her and her husband, on the other hand, not so great. She said, we're not even really talking, he didn't come at home, you know, I'm actually surprised to even see him here today because... I ain't seen him at the house. I mean, he ain't staying with me, so I ain't even talk to him like that. Um, we also found out that Marie suffers with lupus. She said that in 2016, she was diagnosed with lupus, and she said she was bedridden for about a year. Um, and lupus is an autoimmune um, disease, and so, you know, she said that she has her good days and her bad days, and that she's on medication, and it's being monitored, but it is, you know, it's hard. It's a hard disease to deal with. I have friends who have lupus, um... And so I definitely understand, you know, from that point of view. Um, and she tells him, listen, I got this empire that I, you the head of my, you, you're my oldest child. So my empire, you know, I, I, I own about 10 businesses and, you know, you got your pick of the little, whichever one you want to run. But what you're not going to do is you're not going to run anything until you get yourself together. I need you to get your, your college degree. I need you to get your life together because I don't feel comfortable right now leaving you anything because I don't think you're ready for it. And so I need you to get it together, and I need you to be ready, you know. And so, listen, you can't be mad about that. Um, especially, you know, you dropping babies, you know. You know. Like an unsigned rapper be signing, you know, be dropping mixtapes, child. I don't know, I had to reach for that one, y'all. Um, Lord have mercy. Latrice. I mean, um, Antoinette is having a rededication of her home. She is inviting friends over to rededicate that space. Remember, it's her house with her husband. She redecorated to sort of make it her own. And they're going to sage so they can get out the old spirits, bring in positive vibes and new spirits. I think this is a really good idea, especially if you have friends that have gone through a breakup and they're still living in the home that they share with their husband, go on and sage that thing. Have some friends over, drink some champagne, have a little hors d'oeuvres, and sage. I am here for that. I was so here for that. I thought that was a really cute idea. Now, she didn't invite Marie because she don't like her. And I'm okay with that because Marie would have turned this into something totally, totally different. The vibe would have been fucked up. She didn't invite Letitia because she said that Letitia be making too many excuses for Marie. And I, I just ain't here for it today. I don't feel like it. I ain't here for it. So they ended up having like a little bit of a conversation before they got started. Because of course, Kaylon is there again, child. And they got to talking about the brunch. And Kaylon was like, well, I mean, it's hard to be in a space where you feel like you're going to be attacked if you say the wrong thing. I mean, people taking off their earrings and their shoes ready to fight. Now, unless they edited that part out, ain't nobody take off no earrings and no shoes. I mean, Marie was ready to whoop your ass, but I, I, I don't remember seeing that happen. I mean, if I missed it, tell me. If it was edited out, okay. But, girl, if you don't go sit down somewhere 
And I'm here for um, Tiamba because Tiamba was like, what you're not about to do, you're not about to blast the brunch because I've been posting them brunches for years and we ain't never had no problems. So what I'm going to need you to do is stop. Uh-uh, we ain't doing it. And kudos to Antoinette because Antoinette was like, that ain't what we're here for today. We done with it. Let it go. Leave it over there. Positive vibes only. Positive vibes only. Okay. And then they proceeded to sage the house. Okay. Um... Again, it was a fun time. They couldn't get the sage lit child. They had to light it on the stove. Then all of them had these big ass bundles of stay a sage. They didn't set off the um, fire alarm because of all the damn smoke. Then Latrice, they went into her room. Now, listen, I'm a bit more believe that that's your master bedroom than the man in the moon. But I also am really okay with you not letting cameras in your personal space. I am fine with you saying, listen, we're going to film this whole Sage My Bedroom because we want to bring the right man into my room and Sage in my lingerie and all of that. I'm here for that moment, okay? It was a cute, it was a good kiki and it was cute. But y'all know good and daggone well that that was not the master suite. Not in that house. Now, that might have been the master suite in my house, but that wasn't the master suite in that house. Girl... Well, let me even take that back. My master, the master in my house is bigger than the master that they showed there. Girl, girl. But again, I, I'm here for it because, again, I ain't letting the cameras in my actual bedroom. Like, we can, we can play, we can, we can film this scene down here to the, to the, um, guest bedroom. But y'all not coming in my personal boudoir. No ma'am. No ma'am. Anyway, it was a good, but it was a, it was a moment. It was a moment. And I was here for it and I thought they had a good time, um, Kaylon, why we can we stop inviting Kaylon and stuff? What this woman doing here, Hoppo? Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Talk to y'all later. Peace.